In the third Dune Part 2 trailer, we get some very interesting visuals and quotes. This is a deep dive of the Dune Part 2 trailer 3 of things you might have missed. This video is going to contain spoilers, so if you do not wish to be spoiled, please watch another video of mine. But before we begin, as you may or may not already know, my channel is not being monetized. So if you wish to support this channel, consider joining my Patreon. Any help would be much appreciated to keep this channel going. Now with that out of the way, let's get straight into this deep dive. The trailer starts with a familiar hum, which appeared in Dune Part 1 trailers, and is the voice of Lisa Gerard, who you may recognise from albums like the Gladiator soundtrack and works by Dead Can Dance. Paul wakes up beside Chani, their love has clearly grown, and if you look closely, Paul has the blue within blue eyes, so he has been among the Fremen for a while at this point. Paul wakes up from a nightmare, and in this nightmare, we see an out of focus shot of Paul running towards someone, standing on top of a sand dune. This is the same scene that we see in focus in another trailer, suggesting that this is a reoccurring shot, or the continuation of one that we will see in Dune Part 2, and a significant moment in the film. We see the Water of Life bottle, in its unchanged form, the same blue colour as the eyes of the Fremen in the Dune movies. The symbol on the bottle of the Water of Life seems like a Kabbalic symbol, reminiscent of the Tree of Life. Princess Irulan is holding a metallic scroll, written in a language called Galach, the common language throughout the Imperium. Can you work out what it says? This is the Empress ship, and it is protected by a defensive energy shield, but there is also a shield protecting the Sardaukar encampment. Once the shield is down, the Fremen have the ability to strike the structure, damaging it, which is what we can see here, a large explosion hitting the Sardaukar encampment. These strange men in dark clothing are handlers to assist Phaedrautha in the arena against his opponents, and they are holding barbs to stab the slaves in the arena. And this is a dart to drug the Atreides slave, making him drowsy and tired, perhaps shot by one of the handlers. This scene was deleted from some of the trailers online, perhaps due to its spoilerish nature. And if you look at his left arm, you can see a design drawn in blood of an Atreides hawk to show that he is an Atreides soldier. And this is all part of Thufur Hawat's plan, so hopefully we will get to see him in the movie. And in some of these altered trailer versions, it includes a different shot of Fade raising his blade, with one noticeable difference. In the previous shots, the blade is clean, but in the new shot, Fade's blade is now bloodied. Many shots have significantly changed since the previous Dune Part 2 trailers. Austin Butler has been made more muscular here, some shots have been more desaturated in colour and lowered in brightness. More crowd changes, including new headgear. The figure that we saw walking with an emerging sandworm behind them was all out of focus. The upgraded shot shows it more in focus. In the previous shot of this battle, we saw a lone figure running ahead of the soldiers into battle and we wondered who it was. But now the VFX show that this lone figure isn't charging into battle ahead of others by themselves anymore. The opening of the Sardaukar encampment has been moved to the right, repositioned perhaps for logistical reasons. Of all these VFX changes, which frames do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. We see Emperor Shaddam IV ordering someone to send assassins, and he's likely talking to the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim, or a Fenring. Paul seems to be wearing his shield device here under his glove, activated for protection. This could be a measure to protect him from potential assassins after the assassination attempt by Shaddam IV. In this scene, the Fremen Chris knives are unsheathed meaning that they've had to draw blood, perhaps for a pledge of allegiance. Chani interrupts this gathering by taking off her veil, and then she proceeds to say the line, this prophecy is how they enslave us, and give this actor an award for best effort for Islamic representation in Dune. Because he's making a dua, which is a hand gesture of prayer made by Muslims, and it's a religious act of invocation, you can see how he doesn't break eye contact with his palm, and he knows that if this shot isn't cut, then it's going to make it into the film, because Zendaya is the main focus of the scene, so he focuses intently on this gesture to make sure it ends up in the film. And it almost seems out of place, because the extras around him, except for one, are not making similar hand gestures that can be seen on screen. 
I have a feeling that this act was improvised and not part of the direction by Denis Villeneuve. And this kind of act comes with prior cultural knowledge and experience that only the actor himself would have, unless it is a conscious decision to put it in the film. Here you can see the impact of the fall, shaking the sandworm teeth, which I thought was a nice detail to really give you a sense of the impact and the scale of the sandworms. And probably one of the most defining features of this trailer is the music by Hans Zimmer. The score in the trailer is based on the Atreides theme that we heard in Dune Part 1 upon their arrival to Arrakis. Here you can see the Baron floating beside Fade Rautha, played by Austin Butler, in an important ceremony, perhaps in which Fade Rautha is to become the next in line to inherit House Harkonnen. These scenes seem to be the future of Arrakis, just after the end battle, when Paul defeats Fade, which then moves into Dune Messiah territory, where he conquers the known universe with the Fremen by his side which means that Denis Villeneuve is actively setting up a third Dune film, Dune Messiah, planting those seeds in Dune Part 2. This is the Sardaukar with new broadswords, making their last stand against the Fremen. These Sardaukar warriors drop their swords and run for dear life, because no amount of training can prepare you for a showdown with a sandworm. And these are new Imperial aircraft, which look like the wings of birds. And these are some kind of ground cars, New vehicles we will see in Dune Part 2. And speaking of new vehicles, this seems to be a new Mega Spice Crawler. A sand crawler which seems to have been revealed in the Dune Imperium Uprising game. We can see the Fremen ducking and diving underneath the Harvester in the previous trailer. This Fremen fires a missile at an enemy Ornithopter, but an Ornithopter is preparing to fire back at the Fremen, riding on the back of the Sandworm. And then the trailer ends with a mysterious quote by a mystery character who says You are not prepared for what is to come. And in the Brazilian dubbed trailer, you can hear the voice actress at the end is clearly a young girl. Você não está preparado para o que vai acontecer. Which could mean that this quote is Alia. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please don't forget to click like, share and subscribe and click the bell so that you can be first to be notified of new videos. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can support me on my Patreon, where it really helps to keep my channel going. Thanks to all my patrons for your support. Check out some of my other Dune content or some of my other popular culture videos here.